we just had what is called a month end markup. Wow, did you see that on Friday? The market just surged at the end of the day, literally within the last half hour of trading. Now, we do have some room to run, but there are some obstacles out there. So we have a lot to talk about. Sit back, let's go. Hello, this is Michael Optus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First time here, I'm a practicing financial advisor. We have a registered investment advisory firm. Yes, we're going to talk about investments today, but we are full service with financial and tax planning. So, in the opening, I talked about what happened on Friday, show you a little bit here into the chart. So, do feel we have some room to run, have some help from the Treasury once again, but I do see some obstacles historically as we get to an election and some other items. So let's go ahead and get to that big board and go through some of these details. Kicking things off, and as a reminder, we don't just do investments. We've got a lot of videos and shorts that are educational in nature, so please do consider subscribing. So let's back into our cycles, all right? So we look at a couple of different things. First up is growth. Now, this week we came out with our revised final Q1 GDP, came in at 1.3, lower than the 1.6 expected. But as you can see, the trend is not our friend. So we have to keep a lookout on that as well. Plus, you could take corporate profits were down slightly as well. Okay, so we have growth. Then the inflation story has not changed, continues to get worse. But this is PCE came out. Of course, we had CPI and PPI came out, not as good. So here, PCE, somewhat flat in nature. But if you do core services X housing, they do continue to accelerate. Just Friday, saw an article shipping up another 4% overseas. You're talking about, about over 112% in the last year pretty darn significant. So we've got growth inflation and then policy. Here's a picture of this weekend's Barron's front page, right? Talks about uh, Chairman Powell, why he won't cut rates. Isn't that the truth, right? What we've been saying for quite some time, higher for longer, okay? And with that as well, had an article come out in Bloomberg this week from Bill Dudley, a former uh, Fed chair, thinks it's the Fed is fighting inflation, right? Think again. Not really a great article. He thinks rates should be higher. I would agree with that, right? There's a reason why inflation is not going down. So really concerned about that. So let's bring all this together with our cycles, okay? The four different cycles, like the seasons. So we have been more in a cycle two scenario the last couple months. Growth accelerating while inflation accelerates really heading towards this area the next few months we feel as growth slows we showed you that but inflation will continue to accelerate no matter what the fed says so this is where we are right now this cycle three we're positioned for that we'll get more into that in a second so let's go to those charts First off, we'd like to start off with a longer chart, a weekly view. So we look at things in different time frames. Three years or less, not going to show that. Three months or less, which would be indications here. And then three weeks or less, which would be on our daily charts to give us different views. Helps us when we're moving in and out of certain asset classes. So big picture, right? Still in an uptrend, no doubt about that, okay? Because you're seeing, it, seeing a series of higher lows. That is bullish, right? Had a little pullback over here. We went from very oversold conditions. Now, we've popped off the 70 RSI, so RSI's relative strength, all right? We'll see what happens as we go forward. Full stochastic, which is a momentum indicator, still good at this point, so... Overall, I think we're good. When you look at the line there, that's it. That blue line is a 10-week moving average. Still above that. That also is a good sign. So let's go into a closer indicator, which would be your daily charts. 
And we do have a couple things here that are going to stand out. All right, let's start at the bottom. So down here is that full stochastic momentum on a daily. We've had a negative crossover, and that's why we had a little bit of this pullback. Not unexpected on our last email to clients on the 15th. I said expect some kind of pullback here because we were in overbought conditions. Now, next up over here is the volatility index, and there is no volatility, right? We cannot get above, it seems, and sustain 15. So when we're 15 or below, those are buying signals, okay? That's when we like to be in the market. 15 to 20 gets a little bit hairy, can get choppy. 20 above, we're really going to probably start uh, liquidating, raising some cash and or shorting, okay? So for now, very suppressed volatility. On top of that, as you go up here, there's your relative strength. In this case, right, you have 30, which would be way oversold. 50 is kind of the middle line, so we bounced off to 50 on Friday. And again, 70 would be uh, overbought. That's why I said in the opening, I think we have some room to run here, okay, based on some of these indicators. And then you see here, we're able to bounce off the 50-day moving average and close above the 20-day moving average, both of which at this point are still bullish, okay? So let's look underneath the hood here on a couple slides. The first thing is the NYSE, the full market. When you look at that, I have that in blue. On top, the histogram, that is new highs minus new lows. So again, we're still not, you know, as the market's gone up, sure, over here we had some decent thrust. Right now, right, not really, okay, especially in the last couple of days. So let's see what happens here. You know, when you go back to 2021, we have massive thrust. We're still not seeing that as it pertains to the overall new highs minus new lows. New chart I'm showing here at the top is the S&P, NASDAQ, mid cap, small cap. And these are companies above their 200 day moving average. We look for that surge above 60 and starting down the bottom, we're below 60, just above, et cetera. So not a big surge, but I do see on Friday, obviously have a button hook moving in that direction, something we will continue to watch. Next up, Sector Spotlight. So we always like to start with the treasury with sectors, gives us a good idea of some other things happening in the overall market. But a couple things, right? When you go over here, we've had a series of higher lows, right? You close a higher low, higher low, higher low, which is bullish, which in this case, which would mean bearish because yields will go up, price goes down, okay? Now, we had a bounce off. There's your peak over there. We're having some manipulation when the Fed comes out, the Treasury trying to do what they can to suppress and move down those rates, but it's not working, okay? So at this point, we continue to watch this. We feel we go above 5%. I think you've got two reasons why. One is inflation, which is the big story. Number two is going to be the deficit and what is going on. It's out of control. So the 10-year, we're not in duration bonds right now. That buy and hold 60-40, we are not in duration. You're better to be in cash, right? Where you're, at least you're getting that yield every month versus having the upside, excuse me, downside potential that we've had year to date, okay, on bonds. Next up is going to be China. I've talked about this quite a bit last video, as well as our email to clients. I talked about how, you know, we finally started moving. We had a big surge, which is called a gap up, which is right over here, okay? So it gaps up between prices, really took off, saw a nice move there. But I did say we're overbought, we would look for a pullback. Well, we're having it right now. So I think you've got a couple of different areas here. One, for support, the first is going to be that gap area. And then you have the 50-day moving average, which would be your, ne your next hard support. So, you know, one of the positives right there, that's the 50-day going above the 200-day, right? That's called a golden cross. That's positive. You're still in an upswing right now. So this pullback, I've been waiting. I don't see a buy signal at this point, or if I'm going to add to this position, if you go down here, right, that is full stochastic momentum. Obviously, you see the momentum is to the downside. So I'm going to look 
for a little bit of a move to the upside, a positive cross there on momentum before I add back to those positions and get a confirmation. But we still are in an uptrend as it pertains to China. So the one thing we've talked about, inflation, right? So we're going to complain about it or own it. So in this case, we're going to own it. We've got a couple of different ETFs and some different names within the inflation space. So big picture, XLE, we'll talk about that. A big ETF has really been an underperformer, right? If you look at the last month, it has been an underperformer, but had a nice little counter trend move on Friday, all right, which I do like, still like oil going forward. We had OPEC announcement this morning. They're not changing anything. Historically, summer right rate uh, goes up. Why? Supply and demand. People are traveling. So I'm continuing to hold my energy p uh, positions at this point, but we'll see because it has gone down. It really hasn't brought a lot of alpha return to the portfolio in the last month. Last up. So when we're inflation, we've got a lot of different assets. When I talk about inflation, I talked about oil. We have an inflation ETF that has a whole basket of commodities, so it gives us great diversification in a lot of different areas where it's going up. Coffee, wheat, corn, you name it, right? So on the other side are hard assets that do well in inflationary periods, which is gold, silver, and copper. So we've got gold and silver. I talked about uh, copper in the past. Now, obviously... A lot of copper is needed with a lot of this new AI and chips and everything else. So huge demand in the copper space. And we finally had a pullback for us to enter into. So we entered in on the pullback. Haven't seen a move since, but this is one of those areas that we definitely like going forward. And even if we continue into that cycle three area. Next up, macro spotlight. So going back to the cycles, macro, all those cycles are driven by macroeconomic data. So what I'd like to do here is just point out a couple things here. Big picture, just to show what we're looking at. At this point, mentioned this several times now, obviously the market's going to move a momentum no matter what the macro looks like. And I'll show you one of those reasons why in a second. So first up, when I look at the macro picture, you have to look at financial conditions, all right? Now, this is something last year that really drove the market. When you have loose financial conditions, the markets love it, right? That's liquidity. So with all of what the Treasury, not the Fed, the Treasury and Janet Yellen pumping all that liquidity in the market with all these different programs and extended budgets, you name it, we have created very loose financial conditions and they continue, okay? Here shows you where we're at the beginning of the year. That's last month. And we're even looser today. So every day I look at this, not that I should because it comes out every other Friday, but this is something I continue to look at. If financial conditions are loose, that is going to continue to be a bullish signal here. So one thing last week, when you look at what's happened with some of the news, I thought this was interesting. How can you tell me won't lead to stagflation? Okay, Jamie Dimon, extraordinary government spending, what we just talked about has embracing for high inflation and unemployment. Okay, here's some other quotes from Jamie, very smart man. Inflation's not going away, meaning bank crushing interest rates aren't going away, and neither shelter. Looking at 8% type mortgages. A lot of inflationary uh, forces in front of us. Got to be careful, careful. And once again, stagflation, right? That's that cycle three where growth slows and inflation continues to accelerate. Part of this, also Jamie Dimon talking about this, the commercial real estate uh, market, I continue to talk about this because we've got major problems happening across the country. I print out one, there's a guy, I'll put a link below, Triple Net Investor I follow on Twitter, and he's always showing different uh, properties out there. Washington, D.C. Gallery Place, right next to Capital One, is expected to sell at a shocking 83% discount. That is unbelievable. Every single day we're seeing this, people walking away from properties, selling at massive discounts. Somebody's getting hurt somewhere. Is it the owner? Is it the bank? At this point, there's no bleeding outside of what we're seeing here, meaning in the overall banking sector, but this is definitively something that we 
continue to watch. All right, so I'm bringing back an oldie but a goodie. This is your yield curve. An article popped up that brought my attention back to this. Not that I don't look at it, but yield curve is 10-year treasury minus your two-year treasury. And when it inverts, goes negative, historically with a 100% success rate, has caught a recession. And you can see a couple here on the board. We are now in the longest time frame in history of being inverted. So what's going on? A lot of people are saying this indicator is meaningless at this point. It doesn't matter. Obviously, it's been wrong this time. But here's the article. The yield curve is inverted, but there's still no recession. What gives? And in this article in Bloomberg, it talked about what I just said. Because of all the liquidity, the massive amount of liquidity, $12 trillion in the last three years, right, has gone to the deficit, that has basically muted this. Now, there's a lot of people calling for a recession, saying either coming or now. One of the people I truly respect, Daniel Martino Booth, great book called Fed Up. Put that link below. Awesome economist. I've had an opportunity uh, to hear her speak face to face on several occasions. So think the world of her. She's saying it's already started. Now, if you go back to the 08 crisis, they did in fact go back eight months and change the date on that. Okay. Part of her reasoning is unemployment. 37% of the states right now are reporting rising inflation. Historically, when that has happened, that is when a recession comes. So I'm not saying one way or another, I don't see it today. The different firms I use for research don't see it today. One is saying something is coming, but we're not there yet. But something we have to respect and continue to look at. Next up on the macro side, capital goods. Just showing this real quick. It shows you orders because there's not much going on, right? <laughs> you would expect if we're surging, if we're growing, capital goods orders should in fact be increasing, and that's just not the case. Next up, let's talk about options. So getting into options, not gonna go crazy deep here. We added this to our process a year ago. It's very important why it has gotten so large. It's a big part of the market. It can and will move the overall markets. Now, I'm fortunate I've got Tier 1 Alpha, our research firm to utilize. So every day I get an email with several images and commentary, so I always know what's going on within the options market and how it can and potentially impact the market. So, first thing we look at, keeping it simple here, positive, neutral, negative, gamma. Okay, when it's gamma, basically here, we did go negative the other day, but this can flip-flop on the short term. We were very much positive through this most recent run-up, but you can also have a flip line, which we're very close to, 52.96. So when I see that, okay, when you're buying, when we're positive, buying begets buying, selling can beget selling when you're negative. Another thing you look for here is realized volatility, okay? One month and three month realized volatility. I'll put a link below what that means, okay? But basically, again, keeping it short because high level, I want to look at these charts quick. When that one month realized volatility goes below three month, realize volatility, that's a buy signal. Very simple, and then you can correlate that to flows. And we see flows going up, little button hook there at the end. Like I said, in the last few days, it went neutral and then negative for a couple of days. But these are a couple good high level, real quick in the morning for me to see what's going on, what to expect if we have a move within the market based on certain strike prices. So next up, let's talk about game plan. All right, wrapping things up quickly, game plan. Fully invested, but always looking somewhere, right? I showed some of the macro stuff, a couple negative things, and I'm not negative on the market, but we've got geopolitical, political elections, all kinds of stuff, inflation, a lot of things going on. You have to be aware and be more nimble these days as it pertains to the market. Is the top in? A lot of people are saying that, right? We need a surge above that to have another leg of this bull because we've been bouncing around right? We're not able to break above. So we'll see what happens there. Talked about inflation assets, a lot of opportunity there. As we continue, which we believe for the next couple quarters into a stagflation and period. And then China, let's see what happens. Is this an opportunity? Will we get a buy signal, okay, to have another ride to the upside or a sell signal to cut it, lock in those gains and move on? 
Thanks so much for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV. <laughs>